Welcome to Toffee TV. It is back. It is the Premier League preview. We are back. Everton versus Brighton and Hope Albion. Goodison Park. Three o'clock kickoff this weekend. And I am joined by Jack. And Jack, this is a tough game for Everton. Yeah, it certainly is. And it's a game of big importance as well. Not just starting the season off, but starting the season off at Goodison Park for the final time. But before we get into that, can I just say... Doesn't it feel like this has all came around really fast, the season starting again? With, you know, you look at when from the end of the season right into the Euros, and I don't know if you watch it, but the Olympics yeah, was on. So all of it. With the just, you know, sport constantly being on the telly, it feels like we've not really had a break. But in a way, that's good because after we finished the season on a positive note last year, and, you know, we're all not excited about the last year at Goodison but it's a big thing for us it's going to be an emotional time and we want to end on a high I think it, it's good that we're raring to go ready to go it has it does seem a quick turn around but for all of the reasons like you just said we had the Euros to watch didn't we and then um, the Olympics which was brilliant and then we obviously seen the Super Cup this week with Real Madrid winning yet another trophy and all that and then the, and the championship nice. and, and the football league starting last week of course and there's been Carabao Cup games this week and all of that we are back at Goodison Park this weekend for the Premier League I think Brighton have made some signs spent a lot of money this summer 120 million euros and looks like Georgino Rutt is on the way for another 40 so that'll be 160 million euro little bit of a change attack from Brighton in terms of spending that money. They had traded really well and we know that they didn't spend a lot of the money they got in last summer for like Alexis McAllister and obviously for Casido as well. Um, that money has been sat burning a hole it seems in David Weir and Co's pocket but they have been spending it this summer but they've recruited well obviously Jan Cuba Minter who may well have been an Everton player had Calvert-Loon moved to Newcastle. Um, they've also brought in like we just said Georgina Rutter coming through the door it seems it's not done yet but it seems they brought in Matt's wife Weife, or wife from Feyenoord for 30 million euro a uh, Bragent Gruder very very highly rated winger coming in from Mainz for 30 million euro uh, Ibrahim Osman from Norgeland for 19 and a half million euro although he's gone off on loan to France it looks like and they brought in Malik Junior Yalkoy from Gothenburg for 7 million euro and then obviously like I said Georgina Rutter so they're splashing the cash this summer, uh, looking probably for a European place this season. Yeah, and you know, fair play to them. They've obviously been player trading really well for mm -hmm. a long period of time and they're reaping the rewards. Now, aren't it? Decided now's the time to break the bank. We've got a new manager in. We feel like we need to act now and start spending this money. And fair play to them. They ran the club well financially for a long period with proper planning. It must be nice. <laughs> But regardless, yeah, I think one thing that's abundantly clear is they've signed a lot of attacking players, especially with Rutter about to come in through the door. He won't be playing at the weekend, but still it shows mm. the intention, doesn't it? We already know they're a little bit top-heavy with the likes of Matoma, Fergus and Joe Pedro and others as well. Yeah. And we know that Brighton as club generally tend to stick to certain philosophies around football. We don't know much about this new manager that came in. I don't mm. think many people even knew who he was before mm. he got the Brighton job. He's a young fella. He's only a couple of years older than me. It makes you, um, makes you think, doesn't it? You know, what you're doing with your life when a fella <laughs> three years older, he's about to kick off the Premier League season. But um, <laughs> no, I think, you know, we haven't been able to see Brighton under their new manager with mm. their new players in the door go head to head with other Premier League teams and get a gauge of what they're going to do in mm. a specific sense. But we have a general idea of what they're going to do because they're Brighton and they play football a certain way. Mm. And fortunately, we have a decent idea of how we stack up against that, how we stack up against Brighton's general philosophy of playing. And we don't have the worst record in recent years mm. against them, especially when you look at games like the 1-1 last year where we were unlucky. With, obviously, we could have and should have done more, but it took an unfortunate goal for them mm. to get back in it. Again, when we went to their place, Lewis Dunk with a late goal as well. Mm. So we know we can perform against them under De Zerbi, the old manager. And the thinking is, under the current manager, because they're dedicated to their way of doing things, there shouldn't be too many differentials and the general idea of attack versus defence yeah. on opposite ends of the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're right. So you look at the head-to-head -head in the Premier League, they play 14 times, Everton have won six of them. Brighton have won four of them, there's been four draws. And the last couple of seasons, you know, two draws last year, like you rightly say. 
the year before they won four one at Goodison and we won five one at the Amex, which is a mad turn around of events in a few months, just a few months between the games. And we know that they're a very good side. We know that the you know possession based Fabian Hertel has come in. He's thirty one years of age, a baby, and he's come into that. And I think the little t- sort of tweaks he's made that do things a little bit quicker now than than maybe what they did do. They press a little bit higher, but. We know, we sort of know going into the game exactly what it's going to be like. Everton, the fourth best defensive record in the Premier League last season. We know we're going to have to be on it from a defensive standpoint. And then hopefully with the crowd at Goodison and you know the players we've got, and obviously we've got a couple of options off the bench in Illiman and Dye and uh, Jesper Lindstrom. That, you know, they are sort of game changers for us. I'm Calvert-Lewin who has uh, had a good season last season, still here, or, you know, sorry, returned to playing a lot of games last season. He's still our top goal scorer. He's still here at the moment. So we know we've got the weapons in the side. After like the Corey, who got a couple of goals in that 5-1 a couple of seasons ago, still playing and, and playing off bomb. And, and we know we've got to make it difficult for them. We're going to have long periods without the ball. Even in that 1-1, like you say, last year, Everton should have put the game to bed. Brighton ended up, I think, with about 80 percent possession or 76 percent possession they had a lot of the ball didn't do anything with it and Everton had opportunities to kill the game off and didn't uh, and it took a, a big deflection off Ashley Young near the end to get them a point if we're in the same position at the weekend we've got to try and get them killed off but they are a good side we know that yeah obviously we're going to have less of the ball than mm. them based off how we play and based off how they mm. play it's a natural marriage of yeah. things isn't it they're going to have spells with the ball and it's about us being organised in a way that lets them have the ball but doesn't let them do that much with the ball. Mm. And we've done that successfully against them in the past. We've done that against possession, possession-based possession teams in the past as well. Yeah. So we know the general idea of it. I think we just need to be prepared to be flexible because we don't know what they're going to pull out necessarily. <clears throat> Excuse me. With having new players in the squad, with having a new manager who, yes, will do things similar, but is obviously going to come in with his own ideas and different ways of doing things. We need to be prepared for them to run at us directly because they've got um, Yakuba Minter and Matoma mm-hmm. on the squad on opposite flanks, and you know they're direct wingers who want to take on the full backs, and we need to be prepared for that. You know, not just knocking it around sideways for five minutes like you might expect them to. They might have the ball, but you might be using it to launch wave after wave of attack down the flanks because they've got the pace there. Mm. So we need to be flexible in that regard. Obviously, be cautious, but be willing to go for it when we need to as well. Because obviously, football matches and your football tactics within those games shouldn't be decided on things like feelings and nostalgia and well wishes. But it is the last time we'll kick off a game at Goodison. And uh, for the start of the season, mm. and we do want to win it, and we want to set that tempo for the season right as well. You know, you want to get a good result at home and establish. No, we're going to have good home form all the time anyway. But this season, especially, because it's a mm. special season for us, and this place we need to win our games at. Definitely, and we've listen. We finished the season winning five state home games, and Liverpool was one of them. We haven't beat them for a while at Goodison Park, and they're a, they're the top side, and we beat them. So we we know we can do it. Um. You know, Brighton, a lot of people are tip Brighton to finish above Everton. I wouldn't sit here and argue with that. But doesn't mean Everton can't beat them. And last season, you know, we had two points deductions. We had, did you know, we lost the first four home games. We didn't win a game of football for four months and we still finished, we still won as many points as Brighton did across the season. You know, and I know they had Europe, but they didn't have as traumatic time as what we did with everything that was going on. And we still matched them for the points. So, they can, we can do it. We, we're well aware they're a good side. We're well aware that we, they proved before they come to Goodison and, and battered us, you know, in those games because they took their moments well. And it's up to Everton to to set the stall out. The manager will do this. It, it's what he's, he's key at, isn't he? Setting that stall out, making it difficult to play against. And like you said, all the other stuff then, she'll take over the atmosphere, make it difficult for the players and hopefully Everton get in front and and do the job. Uh, their pre-season form, uh, they beat Kashima Antlers 5-1, they beat Tokyo Verde 4-2, won 1-0 at QPR, and then beat uh, Villarreal 4-0 last Saturday. So, scoring goals, looking good. You mentioned Jan Kuba Minter there, um, who's been a summer signing from Newcastle. He's, he looks sharp, has already got a couple of goals there. But Matoma is the uh, 
is the one I think that we have to look at. Karu Matoma, he's going to probably be up against Ashley Young. Um, last season, 34 shots, three goals for them next year, 3.49. But he creates a lot, doesn't he? And he had injuries last season, of course, as well, which is why he didn't get as many goals as he did the season before. But a lot of clubs, other clubs, higher profile, if you like, looking at Matoma. Uh, and he really is going to carry a threat, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's one of those players that even if he doesn't, you know, score or assist or directly on the face of things, massively influence the game in terms of goal contributions or however you want to judge it. Mm. He's such a skilled dribbler that, yeah, he might be able to beat two men and get the ball up the pitch in situations not that many other players could. Mm. He's the type of player that, because he carries that threat, extra attention needs to be given to him. And, mm. say, Jack Harrison, for argument's sake, is <laughs> starting on the right wing. Yeah. He comes out of the game a little bit more to help mark yeah. him. And even if that means, yeah, it works, we mark him out the game, we've had to attribute two players to dealing with him which leave them more space for other players, especially when they are going to have a lot of attack and talent on the pitch to find space. So it is going to be dangerous, and he's one that I think regardless is going to affect the game, whether directly or indirectly. But we are in a position where, based on our summer signings, we've got players who can maybe do that for us if the manager is willing to trust them and give them game time. I think Endai, not just this game at the weekend but over the course of the season is someone who could be a massive massive boost for us because he can be that player for us he can be the skilled dribbler who's got a little bit of turn of pace and likes to take his man on time and time again even if not every single time it works out he's the player you know who's got that in his locker he's the player that the other team has to give their attention to mm. and you know has to sacrifice a couple of players to mark him so i don't expect him to start but I'd like to see him start, and even if he doesn't start, I think he needs an extended period off the bench because he, for me, is he's our flair player almost. Mm. He's our attack and threat. Takora obviously has his own benefits. We've seen he scores goals in that role. We also know he can drop into the midfield and mm. give us an extra body, which might actually be quite useful in a game like this. But we know he has limitations mm. in that role as well, and, and Dai is the braver, more progressive choice for that role, and... I'd like to see Dyche start the season off optimistically and with a bit of bravery and commit to end I in that role. But we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I, I think the Corey will play there. <laughs> but and Dai is an option. We saw it in the game against Roma. He came off the bench and lit the place up and, and was a threat and run up and then caused you know, problems and hit the post and all that. So he does commit defenders. Uh, Matoma got four assists as well last season. And just on Minty, he spoke about him. Then he's a left-footed right winger. He's pacey. Uh, he got 10 goals in the Eredivisie last season and five assists playing for final, cutting in uh, 56 shots he had uh, with that left foot over the season. So we know that he is generally going to uh, gonna try and cut in and Michalenko's going to have his way cut out against him. But listen, that we know they're a good team. Everton had a difficult side to play against when they're, when they're at it. Um, Gary Neville joked this, this week that we can only play when it's dark. And it's uh, you know we're up against it, backs to the walls. We can't play in the sun when it you know the start of the season. So let's go out and prove those kind of comments wrong, and beat a team who you know maybe in six weeks when Hazel has got the got everything under his belt, the, the experience in the Premier League, Brighton are a well-oiled machine. We know they're a good side anyway, but maybe we can catch them at the weekend before the the fully up to speed. And I fancy us against most teams at Goodison. Doesn't always play out like that, of course. But no, you've got to, though, haven't you? But with the with our crowd and the way we play, and everybody knows the job, and we're always well organised, and it's not exciting to watch and all of that. But we know that we know what we've got in our side, and it's about taking the opportunity. Set pieces will be big. We're excellent at set pieces, and that'll be big at the weekend. And it'll be trying to get corners and free kicks around their box and put them under pressure. And, is that the way I want Everton to progress over? No, I'd rather we progress towards sort of what Brighton are doing. But right now, where we are with the new moving to the new stadium and all that, we have to just cut our cloth accordingly at the moment, don't we? Yeah, and I think obviously um, the manager said in his press conference, but without without a few players, mm. you know, players just coming back into training or mm. um, excuse me, so on the grass, mm. um, for lack of a better term, Nothing but true um, fitness, yeah, mm. true fitness, none of that, you know, false fitness, no. half baked stuff, but. No. Um, 
we've been operating in unideal circumstances as a club for a while and we're just going to need to be comfortable with that unfortunately mm. and I think as a team the key thing for us this season needs to be able to operate in circumstances that aren't perfect and still be able to get results mm. we might have to be missing a couple of players we won't be able to get everyone we want to sign in the transfer window there might be you know busy fixture periods whatever we're going to have to be a team that does well in hardship and what Gary Neville's saying about oh you know you can only perform when your back's against the wall take that and carry that and say we'll always perform when our back's mm-hmm. against the wall and obviously you know we don't just have to be that we don't have to be the, the, we'll fight you to the death mm-hmm. but only to the death mm-hmm. um we need to be able to perform all the time but we can have an advantage over teams that are similar to us in quality where we can win in unideal circumstances because that's something we've had to deal with. You learn that organically mm. over time by dealing with those circumstances. Yeah. And, you know, we spoke a lot about Brighton and the threat they carry and we obviously have to respect that because they have a lot of attack and talent and they're having good results in pre-season. Obviously, you respect them, but don't fear them. No. Because without our points deduction last year, we were right up there with them. Mm. And we've beat them quite heavily recently and would have beat them last year without a bit of bad luck. So mm. we know we can do it. Mm. We just have to obviously give them that little bit of respect in regards to their attack and talent because they can hurt you. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a tough game. There's no doubt about it at Goodison. But like Jack just said, it's very, very winnable. And let's kick our final season off at Goodison Park with a win. You know, however we get there, the crowd will be needed. The 1878s are there setting the flags out and all of that, getting that place ready. There is also, of course, uh, on the ninth minute, um, a tribute to our former striker, Kevin Campbell, who sadly passed away earlier in the summer. We'll be giving him, you know, remembering him on that ninth minute as well. So remember to do that. And let's hope Everton can get off to a good start. The manager will, will have the team well prepared. And let's go and do it. We can't fear anyone at home. Let's go and, and get off the season to a great start. Last year it didn't work out like that. But uh, let's hope it does this season and, and we get off with the win. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.